What is up everybody, Dak here, back with a very exciting project, and by exciting I mean prolonged and I've finally got around to doing it. Now this here is the black amp, why do I call it the black amp? Have a guess. Now this amplifier is fairly old, it's an old class AB and it has inside it a very loud fan, uh, an irritatingly loud fan. And now that I've been using this as a hi-fi, as it is a good sounding amp, but a hi-fi home theatre amp, I am no longer okay with how loud this fan is. Just a quick taste. Where is the switch? There it is. So, uh, just to compare it to my voice, I'll get get it to where my voice is even. It's it's a bit quieter than it's a bit quieter than inside voice. So just for scale, uh, this is like someone sitting in your room watching a movie just going mm, the entire time. <laughs> so what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be swapping this 240 volt fan for computer fans. Uh, these are of course going to be lower RPM and lower airflow than this fan. But I feel like if I've got active airflow over the heatsink itself, uh, that should mean that I don't run into any thermal issues. It should more efficiently uh, be able to cool the heat sink considering the lower airflow. All right, now possibly the only good thing about the amplifier, <laughs> uh, the accessibility. Now, oh wow, this lid is a lot heavier since I put some butyl sound absorbing material on it. Uh, this was uh, my second attempt at getting the thing to be quieter. I was hoping that would be enough and it did work reasonably well but ultimately the biggest problem is the fan is facing out so I can only reduce so much noise from inside it whereas this is delivering the noise straight to outside so I was reducing the noise echoing out the front but not much about the back which was just echoing off the wall uh, but the first thing I did which greatly reduced the sound output was this fan originally was an intake fan. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure it should have been an exhaust, but I have already swapped it around. But um, also I made up this shroud. Uh, what this was for was this fan was originally, I think the idea of the previous guy who uh, modified it or installed it was to blow the air straight over the heatsink. Uh, but since it's intaking now, the air that intakes goes in every direction evenly, whereas air that blows out of a fan just goes in the one direction. So the idea of this was to bring in as much air as possible and focus it over the heat sink. But as for these new fans, as they are computer fans, they're 12 volt. And the issue with 12 volts is nothing in this amplifier is 12 volts. So how do I deal with that? Uh, just a wall watt. One amp output, uh, it's a, another ferrite transformer so it's the same type as this not a class d it's heavy it's old uh risk of electric shock uh so yeah this thing is big and i don't think it'll fit inside here in any configuration um maybe in there although i don't want to touch it due to the caps so i'm going to be cutting this open now that this fan's out of the way, you can start to get a better idea of what's going on in here. Uh, this fan uh, right here is going to be going right on top, probably in a push configuration. Uh, what kind of power does it take? 0.125 amp. Of course it doesn't say it's power, but an eighth of 240 is 30. So apparently this is a 30 watt fan. Uh, 30 watt fan, Jesus. Uh, but something I might take advantage of is this already has uh, 240 volt wires that come all the way that go to it. So I'm just going to uh, desolder them and use them for the new power supply. And yeah, I'll be taking this power supply apart. But yeah, it's funny this amp still works. It's had many components replaced though. You can see the mi yeah mismatched components in it. Right, and here's our freshly opened power supply. Uh, this is the remnants of the old case, but you can see it's quite a nice self-contained unit, which I was hoping for. You can see these two leads here are going to be easy to solder onto these two right here, heat shrink up, unlike these old protective sleeves, which one of them wasn't even over the connector. 
So that's going to be done better than it was in the past. And yeah, it's very simple. Uh, also, something that I really like is all the 240 volt is contained. Once I put these two bits of heat shrink on it, um, all this is just on the secondary, so it's all 12 volt. Uh, here we've got the four, four diodes, which make up the bridge rectifier. Uh, we've got uh, this thing here, which I believe is uh, some sort of overcurrent protection. Oh, I think it's a fuse. And right here we've just got its smoothing capacitor. So yeah, quite a nice unit actually, and should be more than capable of driving uh, 12 watts. <laughs> Alright, uh, progress update. How I'm fixing this fan, this center fan, onto the heatsink, and also, uh, actually I'll mention that later. How I'm, matching, how I'm fixing this center fan is, that's a new hole, and that's a new hole, two holes in the heatsink. I eyeballed them, and of course they lined up perfectly. Now... <laughs> Now, my strategy for this is I'm going to be using some of this tape just as an anti-vibration damping thing. So there's going to be one under each corner and I'm just going to be screwing, not screwing, sorry, uh, zip tying uh, this fan down. But this thing fits very nicely right there. It's got a bit of a gap. So that's where it's going to be going right behind here. Uh, I'm thinking of going with two fans as these two fans fit as a package they both fit right there and I test them all they all work uh, they're not too loud uh, so that's good and certainly all three of them together drawing 12 watts is going to be quieter than the 30 watts that the last fan drew by itself so that should definitely be a plus as for this mount I had a think thought think I had a brain about uh, where to put this on the heat sink, whether to put it uh, near the side as there'd be possibly less airflow here, whereas some might come around here, or whether to put it close to the front as these fans are going to be drawing air through these fins, or whether to pull it near the back so the intake isn't fighting the air coming out. But I decided uh, just to put it right in the centre as this airflow can streamline in and this one here can maybe buff it, but it should make its way around. And in case it does buff it, uh, we've got two fans providing twice as much static pressure as one fan, uh, which should uh, bring air through regardless. Right, and here we have it. Uh, here's our fan, which is uh, mounted in the center uh, quite well. It's got four vibrational pads, but it's only zip tied down at two points. Uh, here we've got the fans. Uh, I managed to screw the fans together using a screw in this corner and that bottom corner and then I screwed it into the back of the chassis just by doing the other two corners so that there wouldn't be an interference between the tip of, where is it, that one and that one. Uh, here's the transformer. Uh, the way I mounted it was I've got some high strength uh, double sided foam tape so I used that against it as well as possibly you can tell or you can see uh, two heads of zip ties. Here's a life hack. If you thread a zip tie right through and around, you can use the head of the other one, of a second one, uh, to lock it down and then you can just snip it off so that way you don't have any uh, zip ties running across the outside. It uses two zip ties instead of one, but it's quite a bit cleaner. So yeah, the transformer should be quite firmly attached. The polarity should be all correct. Um, I braided the cables together. I'm yet to tidy them, but I decided uh, not to before I test it, uh, just in case it doesn't work. Right, now the first moment of truth. Now there's going to be a few moments of truth. Uh, the first one is this one, if it works. The second one is if the amplifier still works and noise stuff. Where this, where's the switch here? All right. Fingers crossed. Also, um, as I did drill out holes, I really hope there's no metal in places. Uh, I'm pretty sure this chassis is earthed. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, it should be all good. Fingers crossed. Feet off the floor. Oh. Oh, okay. That's probably the natural noise of the transformer. I'm just not used to hearing it. I can definitely feel this one buzzing. Hopefully it's not under too much load. 
but yeah, it's right on the one amp it's designed for. I suppose I should could test with a multimeter, but it'd be a bit hard now. Shouldn't just have my hands in there though. The thing's live. <laughs> um, yeah, both these fans are working, and there's quite a bit of air. Yeah, I, I think that hums the new transformer. Hopefully, you can get enough cooling if it's under heavy load down there. God, that fan's barely spinning. That is so slow. Is it producing air? Tiny bit. Wow, it's so slow. That's 5 RPS. So would that be about 300 RPM? Wow, that is slow. But yeah, now it's definitely very quiet, almost whispering level. And it's only a low 50 hertz hum. Definitely a lot quieter than it was before. Well, yeah, a lot of the noise does seem to be amplifier or transformer hum. Got even feeling it. But it's definitely a lot quieter than it used to be. There it is. 